by Liberal MP Jason Falinski. We're also joined by Labour MP Josh Wilson. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to speak with us. Um, we want to start off with this climate summit uh, that's happened and just overnight uh, Fiji's Prime Minister uh, Frank Bainamarama had said that the Pacific Island nations are a canary in the coal mine and he's urging urgent action by Australia to rein in global warming by taking bolder action. Um, if, I, if I could start with you, Jason Felinski, why isn't it that this government will not commit to a zero emissions target, unlike many of the rest of the world? Uh, Fazio, I think um, ultimately we will commit to a net zero uh, emissions target by 2050. The Prime Minister has talked about the fact that he wants to get there sooner than 2050. So it's something that is under active consideration. I know that there's a lot of policy development work going on. Um, as you've uh, previously made the point this morning, all the states and territories have signed up to uh, net zero by 2050. So ergo, so has Australia. Um, I think it's just about getting the policy work done so that when we make it, it's a credible commitment rather than a media release commitment, um, as I think, uh, you know, not wanting to point fingers, but I think that some other nations around the world have um, made those commitments. Well, 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 Their sorry, commitments uh, apologies to, to, to interrupt you, but why then doesn't this government just come out to say, we are working on the policies to get to a net zero emissions target? Why, oh, well, why not we... say that rather than, well, Australia will set its own state and pace at its own time? Well, both things are mutually um, not exclusive. Uh, we will set our own targets. Um, that's quite correct. And I think we have said that we are working on um, reducing our emissions as quickly as possible. So I, I think we have done that, Fazia. Mm. Josh, I'll bring you in here. Um, we know that for the Labor Party, the climate policy has not been smooth sailing either. The party has been split over the issue. We saw the recent resignation of uh, Joel Fix given. With respect to Frank Bainimarama's, the Fiji Prime Minister's comments, he also said that every nation is in a canoe. This was his analogy. And that, that canoe was taking on water and not everyone in that canoe was doing enough to patch it up. What would Labor's response be to that? Well, Labor's response has been consistent. We have always recognised that tackling climate change is an urgent priority. It's absolutely necessary for our own social, environmental and economic well-being and for the well-being of the planet. Our record in government was uh, taking that on, seeing 15% reduction in emissions and kicking off a renewable energy revolution. Unfortunately, it's been very different since 2013. I know you, before we, you got us on, there was an intro about needing more comedy at, at this time of year. Mm. Uh, to hear Jason say that, uh, that the Prime Minister is a little bit unwilling to go and do a media event and, and an announcement without proper preparation uh, brings a smile to my face. That's, that's not what we see from this, this government every week. But there's a conference going on at the moment that's calling for greater ambition and the best the Prime Minister could do was to say, I tell you what the rest of the world, how about we don't cheat by using some kind of accounting trick. Uh, needless to say that that went down like a lime and sulphur scone and we're not being invited to, to contribute. I mean the government will, the Prime Minister will, will now turn on this sort of confected tough guy act where he says uh, Australia will make our own policy, we won't be dictated to by the rest of the world. That is a statement of the bleeding obvious. It'd be nice if the Prime Minister actually got on and, and did something. And if he had the strength of character to take on uh, the difficulties on his own side, we, we might see that. It's not, not Jason. I know Jason has just made an announcement that net zero by 2050 is a given. And in fact, that his government is going to go um, better than that and, and say we'll get to, to net zero sooner than 2050. I, I look forward to the PMO scrambling to deal with that one later today but really the pm needs to needs the pm needs to pick up the bag of cats that is the the liberal party and and sort it out there are still people who were talking to the australian yesterday uh, in a sort of a i don't know whether to call it a neo trumpian or a, a post trumpian fashion saying we should get out of the paris climate agreement that is mm -hmm. the modern liberal party I, I wonder, Josh Wilson, whether it is important for the federal government to actually come out and set these, uh, you know, set, uh, zero emissions target because, uh, as, as Jason was saying, they're all states and many businesses have already set their own targets as well. Why is it then important for 
the federal government has set that target. Well, do we really want a prime minister and a federal government that is just a, a bystander to proceedings? I mean, if, if the best that members of the government can say, and I know, I know Jason's view on this, and I know he wants to see real action to address climate change, but if on the one hand the government is not taking action, which it hasn't, and, on the other, and, and is actually poo-pooing action, both mm -hmm. in terms of policy propositions in Australia and the kinds of things that other countries are doing. What, we give them a leave pass because, because the business world is stepping up, because the states are stepping up. That, that's ridiculous. Jason, I'm sure there's a, a few things you'd like to respond to there, but just perhaps starting with this uh, climate conference this weekend, uh, hosted yeah. by the UN, the UK and France, how embarrassing is it that Australia was blocked from attending? I mean, we were originally invited and Boris uh, Johnson then uh, declined that invitation. Um, look, it, it's disappointing more than embarrassing. I mean, Australia has. I, I, I know that that um, I know that the environment and climate has become an overly political issue in Australia, and that's disappointing. We have a lot of good um, stuff to say about what we have done in this country on the environment. I mean, our investment in renewable energy is more than double that per capita of the next highest nation. So we actually have a really good story to tell on a whole number of fronts, um, including investments in new technologies and other matters. And when you talk, listen to a lot of uh, global climate experts, they all sort of point to the same thing, which is that the solution to this problem is the disbursement of new technologies, especially in developing nations. And Australia will be at the forefront of that. And I think when we start to see this as more of a global issue, which it is, than rather the domestic po political issue that it often becomes in Australia, uh, we have a really good story to tell. So when we're excluded from telling that story at international fora, I, I think that's disappointing more than anything else. Not so much for the government, not so much for Australia, but for the world. And, and this is a global issue that we need to solve. And just before we move on to a, another topic, uh, Jason, how does this leave relations with the UK? We obviously know about the phone call between Boris Johnson and Scott Morrison regarding taking bolder action and this uh, infight that has now been pulled away. Oh, look, I mean, um, Catherine, as you know, uh, friends can disagree on particular issues. Uh, we can have full and frank discussions with the uh, UK and know that at the end of the day we'll still be good friends and we'll still work on important international issues. Yeah. Um, I don't know that there was any rupture in what occurred uh, between Australia and the UK over this uh, conference. Um, that's uh, something that I've uh, speculated or heard and has been speculated on. I don't know that for sure. But we're in, in currently involved in a whole group of um, negotiations with the UK that are very productive. Um, you know, when you read The Economist, they say that the Conservative government in the UK is trying to model itself on a whole number of policies that the Australian government has implemented. So, I mean, our relationships with the United Kingdom, with France, are still very close and very warm and cordial. So, uh, Josh Wilson, let's just say the uh, relationship between the UK and Australia has not been disrupted, but what does it mean if Australia hasn't been invited to this global table? What does it mean for Australia's reputation? What does it mean for Australia's influence um, within this particular region? Well, it, it continues the circumstances for us in terms of our relationship on uh, relationship and reputation on climate that's that's been prevailing for the last last several years we're seen as a laggard when when it comes to uh, showing leadership on that issue globally and in our region and that's a shame because that that wasn't where we were in 2013 we we ratified Kyoto we we put steps policies in place that saw a big reduction in emissions and this renewable energy revolution that that Jason uh, is referring to and that, frankly, that the current government has coasted on uh, that work. Uh, but the, the people in our region are going to be uh, particularly vulnerable to the impacts of climate change, just as we are. But, mm. but island, uh, island communities will be the first affected and they continue to say to us, please, Australia, mm. uh, live up to your values, uh, step up to uh, the kind of role that you've previously played in the past and show leadership.
Mm. Uh, gentlemen, there was furious debate in Parliament uh, the last sitting week, this week over industrial relations. Jason, the most contentious issue of this so-called omnibus bill was that two-year suspension of the boot, the better off overall uh, test. Do you agree that the suspension of this could leave workers worse off? And even if that's not, well, there's obviously not the intention, but wouldn't the suspension of this embolden some bosses to cut pay? Oh, uh, Catherine, absolutely not. I mean, um, you know, it hasn't been suspended. The better off overall test has not been suspended. Um, and, but that's uh, the debate. You know, Is that right? That's the debate over the suspension no, of that no, or the, the boot so, test? So the, the policy issue is that um, Christian Porter has introduced, or the government has introduced, a series of amendments to the Industrial Relations Act that will allow the Fair Work Commission in specific instances where there has been agreement between employees and employers um, to undertake set-offs against wages mm -hmm. and other conditions. So no one can be worse off, um, but uh, for the next two years, a business could argue with its employees that they need to make um, changes to working conditions or working um, uh, practices that will allow the business to continue due to COVID-19. Now, what we saw during the pandemic was, and this is a very inconvenient truth for the IR club, is that we had to turn off literally half our industrial relations laws in order for Australia mm. to survive the pandemic. So rigid, so inflexible are they, that employees and employers could not talk to each other during that period to ensure that people kept their job. Mm. That's what this is about. Now, what Labor is arguing, and it's, it's not even Labor, it's really just Tony Burke. What Tony Burke is arguing is that there would be an employer who is trying to lower the wages of employees. They somehow to get employees to agree to that. They then have to take that to the Fair Work Commission, where it has to meet, which which is still largely the same appointments made under Julia Gillard, and that commission would have to agree to those changes. Uh, it, this is... This is not about reducing wages. It's not about reducing terms or conditions. This is simply about creating a small window of more flexibility so more people can keep their jobs. Josh Wilson, it is a time when the nation's economy and businesses are struggling to recover from a pandemic. As, as we heard there, Jason saying, there is a need for more flexibility. What is it that Labor is willing to compromise to allow um, for IR reforms and at the same time for the nation's economy to recover? Well, we've shown throughout this crisis a preparedness to be constructive and to make suggestions in the best interests of the Australian community. And don't forget that Labor argued the need for a wage subsidy when the government was saying uh, that that was a bad idea. Fortunately, they changed their mind on this. It's absolutely right for the Australian community, for workers, their families, uh, and the people who represent workers to be really concerned about what the government's doing. They spent all week telling us that the comeback is underway, that things are going great and that they've done a fantastic job. Then at the same time, in the last week of Parliament, uh, they come along with proposals that really undermine pay and conditions. And, and where's, the, where's the surprise? Because that's, that's the, the, the only recipe in, in their recipe book. Uh, and they've got form and we've seen work choices under a previous government, under this government. Uh, we've seen the removal of penalty rates, which was apparently going to create more jobs, and that didn't happen. Uh, we've seen economic policy confined to uh, tax cuts for business and proposed tax cuts for very big business that were supposed to trickle down into increase in wages, and that hasn't happened. So it's the same old bull dust from, from the Liberal Party that gets brewed up in the magic cauldron over at the IPA and uh, and then presumably freeze dried if it, if it has to become bulldust but that's 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 what we've that's what we've had from uh, this government over, over seven years and that's been their form in the past and it's right that people are concerned and uh, that's where we're going to have to leave the discussion thank you to both of you Josh Wilson and Jason Falinski if we don't get to see you beforehand have a wonderful Christmas you too thank you